Can anybody out there hear me? I'm using a new device today. I can hear you, Ronald. I don't have to yell anymore. <laughs> So it appears we're just waiting for Councillor Washington. Okay, well, it's four o'clock, uh, so we are we have one councillor still um, just about here, but um, we will call to order our committee of the whole meeting of council and start by recognizing that we're holding our meeting on the unceded territories of the Sushot and Hoopachasset First Nations. We have an agenda in front of us. Councillors, are there any late items to add? Seeing none, Director of Corporate Services, any late items? Uh, yes, Chair Minions, if I could just when you get to adoption of the minutes that we want to note a correction on page three under uh, public input question period, Randy Fraser and the first question, it currently reads that there is 1.6 million allocated towards uh, this project. That number should reflect 4.6 million. Thank you. Okay, and we are, uh, we'll just have a notice of video recording. So we are live streaming and broadcasting this on YouTube. Would somebody like to move approval of our agenda? So moved. Moved by Councillor Solda, seconded by Councillor Poon, all in favor? Carried. And we will, uh, would somebody like to move approval of the March 1st, 2021, 7 p.m. meetings with the, the note of the change? So moved. By Second. Councillor Corbeil, seconded by Councillor Poon. Any questions or comments on the minutes? Seeing none, all in favor? Carried. We have no delegations today, so we'll move on to unfinished business. We start off with the City of Port Alberni 2021 to 2025 Financial Plan Bylaw, number 5023. Andrew, I will pass this over to you. Great. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, or chair chair minions today. Uh, so uh, what we have in the uh, in the uh, financial in, sorry in the in the agenda today is the uh, updated financial plan for 2021 2025. Uh, this now includes all the actuals for 2020, noting that these are not uh, audited amounts. These are just preliminary amounts that we're putting in based on some reconciliations that we've accomplished to this date, but we're still not finalized with that. So uh, there could be some amendments and some changes as we further review the, the actuals, but uh, we will update those as they are, are, are required to be changed. Of course, this is for the general operating, the, the water operating and sewer operating. The, the year to dates for the capital projects are still being worked upon and we are going to have those at a later uh, uh, date for, for council. So with this, we still see the 3.95% increase year over year from the 2020 uh, financial plan. Uh, of course, this includes the, uh, with general debt, this would include a 3.91% uh, year over year increase for the general municipal taxes and the debt uh, for uh, the city, the general debt. So depending on what recommendations that council uh, or, or that the committee seeks today, uh, we can firm up this budgeted document at the next regular council meeting with any additional amendments that that council would seek uh, through the recommendations through the committee uh, noting that any surpluses moving uh, forward would be put back into any reserve accounts for 2020 uh, and then those could be used for future projects or capital initiatives that council seeks in future years so with that, uh, I will open it up to uh, the committee to uh, provide any, any questions or any, any comments on, on the financial plan at this time. And of course, there is the, sorry, uh, there is the Q&A that has been updated also uh, since the uh, last uh, council meeting. Thank you, council. So any questions on what's been presented so far? Councillor Solda. 
Oh, Councillor Solder, you're muted. Okay, so I was talking to um, Andrew just before the meeting and I thought I had the impression and he explained it to me, but some of the public might not understand, Madam Mayor, um, regarding, I thought the taxes were gonna go back down to two point something percent instead of where it is. And maybe he could explain what I thought, which is totally wrong and maybe, and some of the public. So maybe they, he could understand, we could get an explanation. I'll just start by saying, Councillor Solda, I don't think that you are completely wrong. Thank you. <laughs> by any means. Um, so maybe Andrew, you could update on on where we're at this year um, in terms of the financial plan versus what people will actually feel as a tax impact. Thank you. Yeah, I can do that. Uh, so with with the uh, Vancouver Island Regional Library uh, over taxation in 2020, that will go back against the tax rate uh, amount that's required to achieve what is required for the financial plan in 2021. So last year, the tax rate was a 1.9% increase, but there was an over taxation. So that was higher than, than the 1.9 that was uh, planned in the financial plan. But looking at the 2021 year over year from 2020, that increase based on last year's actual financial plan is 3.95%. So that, that Vancouver Island Regional Library amount will reduce the taxes. And we uh, anticipate this to be around a, a reduction of a negative 2.2 or 2, 2.72% year over year. Thank you. Does that clarify for you, Councillor Solda? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Other questions from Council? I might. Madam Mayor, if nobody okay. has a question regarding the pool, the motion for the pool, um, how are we dealing with that? What is the best way um, regarding the, the fund that I would like to see or the motion that I made? So the, the motion um, is for us to create a fund. And so the direction was that staff was going to bring us back options on what a reserve fund um, dedicated to the pool can look like. There hasn't been any specific allocation of money to go into um, that fund at this point. So your motion didn't include that. I think we could have more conversation about that today as we, as we move through the various reports. Um, but I would imagine staff would not be bringing us back, um, you know, like in the next week kind of thing, um, a reserve, a report on the reserves. It might take a little bit more time and doesn't really, I don't think, need to be done as a part of budget. It could be created at any time. Andrew, do okay. you want to add to that at all? Uh, yes, I might add that uh, if there is a, a desire by council to, uh, to look at the options in the other reports that we are bringing for today and, and, and use certain funds for a specific purpose, we can still go ahead and, 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 and set that up within the financial plan and, and bring back the, uh, the, the options for assigning those funds at a later date. Okay. Thank you, that's great. Okay, other questions from council? Councillor Haggard. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Andrew, can you just tell me what the approximate ballpark projected total surplus will be that we're going to have? So I'm thinking perhaps if you do have a surplus that can be transferred into the uh, reserve fund for the pool. Thank yes, uh, good question. So right now, I, you know, like obviously I, I tried to mention that the unaudited amounts, uh, we are still working yeah. through the, the, uh, the year end and uh, we're probably ballparking right about half a million dollars right now. So $500,000, um, you know, just preliminary, um, but we'll firm that up uh, as we get closer to the end of the month. I won't hold you to that figure, Andrew, I promise. <laughs> Thank you very much. Any other questions from council? Council Paulson. Look at me with a new iPad. <laughs> um, I wonder if um, maybe we could just refresh my memory a little bit. I'm looking at the community forest reserve um, that in 2021 will sit at $2.2 million. Uh, I just need a refresher on whether or not we as a council have earmarked any or all of that reserve. And um, I see the mayor shaking her head, no, but uh, that might be a discussion we could have over the next few weeks as well. 
just thought I would uh, point that one out. Andrew, do you want to answer that? Certainly. Uh, so at this time, there has been no allocation of any community forest uh, funding from the reserve at all. Uh, that remains in there to be uh, provided, uh, you know, direction by a council to, uh, to to assign to any any projects moving forward. Thank you. Okay, seeing no more questions, Andrew, if you'd like to move on to um, the first piece of the next or the, the next report, that would be great. Okay, thank you. Just give me a sec here while I flip over. I anticipated a little bit more. All right, so first up is the BC assessment uh, values and non market change uh, staff report. So, we, at the previous meeting, council. Madam Mayor, could we just have the page number so the public can also follow along too and myself? Thank you. So, this would be on uh, page. 46 of the agenda. Thank you. You're welcome. So, uh, so to the committee of the whole, uh, this is the uh, BC assessment assessed values and non-market change staff report. Uh, this is uh, a follow-up uh, staff report that uh, council had requested uh, to further the understanding of council and the public on the impacts of non-market change as far as the uh, tax burdens and, and tax assignment within each property class. So obviously with market change, market change is, is the values that we see year over year for properties that have already been within the market, within the assessed role. So this is the, the amounts that, that a household would see their property increase year over year for, uh, for the BC assessment annual uh, assessed value. When it comes to the non-market change, this includes uh, new construction or new development. And, and we've seen uh, some significant new development in, in the uh, residential class and in light industrial. Uh, and, and even we've seen modest increases in, in the business class for uh, non-market change. So non-market change uh, has been listed here in the staff report uh, for each class individually. As you can see in the, in the report, there is approximately a 6% increase year over year for residential. So essentially what would happen is if we exclude non-market change, the 6% increase year over year, uh, and, and there was no increase in, in the, in the uh, taxation from the city of Port Alberni, and every single property increased 6%, everyone would see uh, probably approximately the same taxation as they did in the previous year. When it comes to uh, non-market change, what we have seen in the past, uh, in recent years, is that in the residential class, the non-market change has diluted the impact of taxation. So in, in, in the current year, we're looking at a 3.95% increase uh, based on the financial plan needs. With that, the non-market change currently in the financial plan is sitting at uh, sitting at an average residential household uh, taxation amount of 2.76%. So with that, you can see that there's an actual drop within the, uh, within the, uh, within the class for those properties because of that non-market change uh, year over year. So there has been some different uh, approaches that, uh, that could be used for, uh, for non-market change. Uh, we haven't done that uh, previously. Other municipalities have looked at taking that non-market change and, and, and putting aside that value in, the, in that first year and assigning it to a special reserve or, or, or any growth uh, needs within a community uh, because this is a growth uh, factor within the community. So today we have in front of uh, uh, the committee of the whole uh, a, a recommendation to move forward with uh, possibly assigning that non-market change uh, into a special reserve or a contribution to a special project. Uh, council uh, has the ability to assign that uh, and it could include all or none of the classes that are in included in, in the recommendation. Uh, but you know the committee could provide that direction to council and those amendments could be made to reflect the 
uh, the impacts of that non-market change and assign that to a special or a special project. So. Thank you. Are there questions to start? Councillor Solda. Yeah, just a, a quick question. So the non-market change, what is the, the approximate dollars that would be? I'm just kind of curious to know. So it is, that is included Total. in the report. Okay, but just the, to... second, the second table that was just on the screen. Yeah. Um, Andrew, if you could possibly share your screen again. It's 163,000 for the residential class. Hundred and twenty three thousand okay. for light industry, fifty four thousand for business. So it's all three totals. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Other questions from council? I'm just getting back to the top of my screen here. Um, so council, anything we decide regarding non-market change today, um, we would be, as we are just a committee of the whole, um, making a recommendation to council. So would come forward to our next regular meeting of council where we could approve um, or deny or go different direction. Um, we have a recommended motion here, which is um, to use the non-market change in the residential utilities and business commercial classes to support contributions to reserve. I would specifically like to suggest that we contribute the residential non-market change to the pool reserve. I think that given um, you know, the interest from the residents of Port Alberni toward, for the pool, I think it would be fitting to assign that specific class to the pool. Councillor Solda. I would totally agree. Actually, that's what I wanted to say. And if we could, and the business, I would love to see the business one go back into the businesses to help them. And I think that's perfect. I, I, I would totally support that. Thank you, you read Thank my you. mind because I was going to suggest that the business class um, be used to reduce um, taxes within that class this year, especially given um, just the challenging year that COVID has been for small businesses. I think it would um, make a lot of sense to redistribute that 54,000 back out um, amongst business commercial. So do we need a motion for that, Madam Mayor, or is that a sure. recommendation? I, I will move that um, members of the committee recommend to council that council use the non-market change in the residential class one to be contributed to a pool, the pool reserve and, and class two, and that business commercial be used to reduce taxes within that class. And I'll be glad to second that. So council, we have that recommendation now on the floor. Are there comments or questions specifically around that recommendation? Councillor Corbeil. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, and further to that, I would suspect that the increase in light industry, which is uh, by far the largest, it looks like 35 and a half percent would be due to the uh, work at the SAN group. Is that something, and I know we're going to be talking about this later, the revitalization bylaw, could that, those monies possibly be, in, be uh, forwarded to that bylaw? Andrew, can you comment? I'm not sure if we could forward it to that to a bylaw specifically um, when we haven't created that bylaw yet. And we do have, I don't want to get too much into industrial taxation yet because it is the next report on our agenda. Yes, Madam Chair. I, I think with, with this circumstance here, this is setting the tax rate and tax burden for the upcoming year uh, to, to assign that to the revitalization uh, uh, exemption. I, that, that, I don't believe that can occur. What we're trying to do here is set the tax rate. Uh, you look at the non-market change uh, and the impacts of that and provide the, uh, the basis to, to set up our tax rates for 2021. Thank you. And I think we'll have, we'll have a lot more conversation about industrial tax rates over the next um, two reports. So we'll leave it at that if that's okay, Councillor Corbeil. Councillor Poon. Thank you. Does all of the surplus have to go to the pool reserve in, in this motion? Or, uh, you know, is there a cap on, on how, many, how much of the reserve goes into the reserve? So this is not the surplus. Um, this is specifically the non-market change. So that half a million dollars oh, surplus okay, that sorry. was discussed earlier 
Um, we're not directing yet at this point because we don't have a final number on it. This is specifically um, new taxation from new units, residential units built last year. Um, oh, okay, okay, yeah. sure. Thank you. So all of that non-market change will be part of this uh, pool reserve. Correct. Is that what you're suggesting? Okay, that, that's what the motion suggests. And so that works out to about $165,000. Okay. Thank you. Councillor Haggard? I think this is a great opportunity for the residents of the community to get started, uh, to look forward to us building a new pool and aquatic center without having an increase in their taxation. So they're seeing the benefits of the development that's coming to our community. And hopefully we can get more development and contribute a bit more to the reserve fund in the following couple of years. Thanks. Thank you. Um, well put, Councillor Haggard. Um, our strategic plan says that um, one of our overarching goals is to let development um, pay for future development. And this is exactly what that does. It takes taxation that came from new development and it reinvests it into our community without having to, um, without having to increase taxes for everyone. Okay, so seeing no more comments, um, we have a motion on the floor. Is everyone clear on that motion at this point? Okay, then I will call the question on the motion. All in favor? None opposed, carried, thank you. Okay, um, Andrew, if you wanna move on to your second report. Thank you, Madam, Madam Chair. Uh, so with the second report, this is another, uh, uh, opportunity to follow up with a, a request from council as far as the uh, revitalization uh, tax exemption bylaw. And this one specifically focuses on the industry uh, classifications of class four and class five. So within the community charter, there is the ability for the municipality to uh, provide uh, specific properties an exemption uh, for municipal property taxes up to a maximum of 10 years. And this is done uh, in order to provide economic, social, environmental revitalization within a community. Noting that the municipal uh, revitalization taxes exemptions do not trigger any exemptions from school property taxes or uh, other property taxes, such as the Alberni uh, Claypot Regional Districts or BC Assessment. This is purely for a municipal uh, taxation uh, a scheme to reduce the taxation for those investments. Council must first establish a, a revitalization uh, tax exemption program that clearly defines the uh, reasons and objectives of the program. And uh, once the program or agreement has been uh, met by those, uh, those particular properties, uh, the subject property could be exemption from taxation for that five or 10 year uh, plan, depending on, on what council seeks as far as a, a, a RTE, I'll, I'll call them call that because it's quite a mouthful for revitalization tax exemption. So moving forward with RTE. Uh, some examples of an RTE could include that environmental revitalization, uh, economic revitalization, uh, and other types, uh, including community amenities, uh, redevelopment of community uh, uh, areas for sustainability, uh, conservation of some historical properties, uh, anything that could increase the in intensification of uh, of residential properties, such as a neighborhood uh, a renewal or a, a facade program, anything for beautification. And with that, uh, we look at some best practices across the province and we see uh, Williams Lake uh, and, and, and their, their approach to take a three-pronged uh, option uh, for their, their revitalization and uh, expanding uh, the city's industrial tax base was one of the uh, criteria. Uh, increasing uh, sustainable local jobs was uh, another one and encouraging those green building practices. So uh, we had a, a, a delegation from the SAM group uh, uh, recently that uh, requested that the light industry uh, revitalization RTE was, uh, was put in place and, and returned. Uh, historically, uh, we had a revitalization uh, bylaw for, uh, for major industry uh, and uh, that was not uh, Taken up, uh, taken up on uh, back in in, uh, in prior years. So uh, that has, has now uh, discontinued, but uh, Sam brought forward the request to, uh, to seek another RTE uh, for light industry. 
uh, you know, their hope is that this will attract the uh, the investment in the community and in the light industry uh, tax base and 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 uh, support those investments that are made in the community. Council could consider an RTE, and they also could consider uh, uh, a focus on other goals, uh, as mentioned earlier, besides just investment. And that would include some community, community benefits that are, 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 are sought by council as far as uh, improvements for, uh, for, the, for the taxpayers. With that, the uh, Alberni Waterfront Employers Association was a industrial taxpayers uh, group that, that, uh, that uh, sought a, a different approach and, and, and they, they sought a, a, uh, a dilution or, or, or a blocking of the, uh, of the taxation between industrial and, and major industries. So with that one participant in that group uh, did not see any incentive to uh, continue on with an RTE. Uh, Paper Excellence uh, had recently sold the property to Sand Group in 2018. Uh, and this enabled the, the utilization of some underused uh, industrial property in, 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 in the city. And with that, uh, Paper Excellence understood that that would help uh, support the tax base and, 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 and in hope uh, would see the, the dilution of the industrial taxes for the, those industrial taxpayers in the city of Paul Burney. Uh, so I, I think from Paper Excellence's point of view, uh, any new investment uh, may, may limit or delay the, that tax dilution that they sought uh, for the industrial classes over the next five to 10 years, depending on what approach council would take as far as an RTE. Uh, you know, the committee has the opportunity here to uh, seek uh, further information, but staff is seeking clarity as far as what specific criteria that uh, that council would like to see in an RTE moving forward so that uh, that could form the draft uh, uh, RTE brought forward uh, for uh, review and possible approval from council. So uh, today staff is looking at the opportunity to, uh, to, to see how council feels about uh, not only investment, but other, uh, other possibilities as far as an RTE, including a, a, a multi-pronged approach such as, we, uh, as we've seen in the Williams Lake uh, uh, RTE that has been provided, so. Thank you very much for that. Are there questions to get started? Councillor Poon and then Paulson and Haggard. Thank you. Um, just given our limited um, industrial lands, I wonder if this is really a focus uh, that we should, uh, you know, be, be working on. Um, just a thought. Thank you, Councillor Poon. I, I think the point you're making is that it's going to be, you know, difficult to attract new um, industry currently with the lack of lands that we have available. And um, of course, that's something that we are trying our best to work on, but uh, you can't create more land. So um, I think that the hope from SAN's perspective would be that um, we would be able to apply this um, to them um, in some capacity over the next few years while they are getting their, their business, um, you know, established and, and in the first early years after making a significant investment. Um, but I think you're, it's a consideration for sure, whether or not, um, this is a priority and to what extent for sure. Councillor Paulson. Yeah, I just wanted to comment and go back to, um, the example from Williams Lake that they have in place. And I also liked um, uh, some of the options that, um, that Andrew presented in there with regards to a scoring system for tax exemption and stuff like that without giving away the farm. I'm sure our economic development department would like to have this in their toolbox if it came down to closing the deal on, on a business that was thinking of coming to Port Alberni, whether it be, uh, it may not be something that is major industry on the waterfront as we know it, but it might be another business um, with an industrial capacity that if we had this to kind of tease them out with, it might close the deal. Um, but I, I did, I, you know, reading that Williams Lake um, option, I liked it. Um, I don't think it would hurt us to have a tax, tax exemption program in our toolbox. I, I'm a little disappointed that it actually lapsed, but 
I understand it never, it really never got used, but um, I think it's a good thing for us to have. Thanks, Councillor Paulson, Councillor Haggard, and then Corbiel. Thank you, Madam Chair. This is a question for Andrew and he might not be able to answer it, but I'm confused as to why the sand group was classified as class four light industry instead of major industry. Because when you read the descriptions, I would have thought it had been put into the major industry classification. Do you know why or could you answer that? Yes, I could. Uh, and with, with, with remanufacturing uh, plants, they are specifically excluded from class four, unless they hit certain thresholds of production. And, and this mill will not reach those thresholds. So uh, when BC assessment uh, uh, reviewed the plans for the property and, and, and the intent, uh, that was specifically moved to class five, which historically was a class four property when it was owned by Paper Excellence and its predecessors. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Corbeil. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Madam Chair, darn it, uh, I'll get that straight yet. Uh, yes, I'm uh, absolutely 100% in favor of this. Uh, uh, you know, we, we were just talking about development. If you want to bring development, you got to bring jobs. And uh, I think what you're seeing is uh, family supporting jobs, which uh, uh, hasn't been around for quite some time, at least in the city of Port Alberni. And I'd like to see this extended to brownfield sites. For example, some of these uh, old uh, gas stations that sit vacant for years on end. And I've got a question for you, Andrew, uh, as well. Um, there's three separate uh, properties down at the paper mill site. Uh, one being that administration building. Is the whole works considered light industry or are they separate? And if they aren't separate, why, why wouldn't that administration building be considered just office? And that's what it's been used for for the last number of years, which would be a considerably a lower rate of taxation. Okay. One question, uh, Councillor Corbeil. Uh, so the building, the administrative building is not in class five. It is a class six uh, property. So it is lower. Thank you. Um, before we move on from that, Councillor Corbeil, I have to just um, I have to just argue one of your points that you made. Um, there are many family supporting jobs in this community, and I think that the notion that the only jobs that support families are industrial jobs um, is prevalent in this community, but is outdated. Um, there mm -hmm. is a wide range of family supporting jobs in this community many of which not being industrial. So it just bothers me when people say that. So I, I had to uh, point that out. <laughs> um, Councillor Haggard. Just to add to your comment, oh, Madam Chair, that a lot of people have found that they can work from home now. So you don't necessarily have to have a bricks and mortar job to have a job to support your family. It can be working from home and we're already seeing people moving in this community that are, have jobs that they can work from home from. So Absolutely. Yeah, it's becoming more and more common for sure. And, and that said, um, I think that the, the whole point of this is that we do want to support those industrial jobs as mm -hmm. well in our community. I think that that is a clear priority from our council. Um, so I am really excited about this coming forward. Um, when the Waterfront Industrial Taxpayers Association came to us about a year ago, um, and requested that we block um, or that we that we cap industrial taxes at the level they were currently at, um, or the, the portion of the budget at least, percentage of the budget that they were currently at. Um, council will likely remember that I argued really strongly against that um, and alternatively said that I felt we should have a revitalization incentive to incentivize um, the type of development that we want to see in our community. And, and we want to see this type of development investment in our community. Specifically, we want to see um, the type of investment that Sand Group is making where they are really looking at the next generation of the forest industry and investing in, in exactly what we want to see. Um, so 
I argued very strongly um, that we wanted to incentivize um, through a tax revitalization incentive. And at the time, um, that was not what the Waterfront Industrial Taxpayers Association was asking for. So um, we did move forward with a lot of planning based on um, the ask that they had made. And I feel personally that um, the amount of thought that went into that planning and, you know, conversations with council over many, many months, um, I feel that at this point for this budget year, um, it would not be um, respectful to those conversations to completely do a 180 and change course. So um, I know we're going to speak to where we're at currently in, and options in the next report, but I'm quite happy with where we're at for this year. Um, that said, I would very much like to talk about a revitalization tax incentive for the industrial class. Um, and Andrew, you had asked, you know, what priorities would council like to see included? Um, I would like to see quality of life. Um, I would like to see access to waterfront lands. Um, it doesn't have to be, you know, those things specifically, but I would like to see community amenities and, and um, you know, enhancing of um, the notion that we can have industry and people um, enjoying different areas of the waterfront. Um, so where we do have predominantly waterfront or industrial um, taxpayers on the waterfront, I think that I would like to see if we're going to offer incentive, um, those companies working with our community, um, recognizing our needs and, and what the desires of, of our taxpayers are. So I know that we've had some really great progress over the last year working with some of our larger industrial taxpayers um, and I would like to see that included um, in whatever incentive we put forward that the community benefits need to be recognized. Council, are there other specific areas that you'd like to see um, other benefits or, or um, priority areas in a tax revitalization incentive? Councillor Solda. Madam Mayor, it's not really for the, um, what we've been discussing, but what about the small businesses that come into the community? To me, they're just as important. And we have so many empty stores that, or spaces that need to be revitalized and it sure would help. So are we gonna be discussing that in the future? Councilor Solda, we do already have a commercial tax yeah. revitalization incentive. Um, and the, the, I think the lowest level um, of investment is around $100,000, um, even for a small business coming in, fixing up one of our old buildings, um, that level of investment is likely, um, you know, what even a small business would be looking at um, to bring one of our, our um, empty storefronts, for instance, um, up to code. So I think that we've already covered that, okay. um, but we could certainly review at any point whether or not we feel... Um, whether or not we feel that that incentive is suitable and, and working as intended, but I think that's pretty far outside of the scope of this conversation. I understand that, but um, 100,000 is not gonna cover the way the prices are nowadays. Maybe it's something we can look at in the future. So Just that 100,000 is, is the minimum investment needed. Yes. Um, so I, I think if, if you're suggesting that the way the prices are, it's not gonna cover it, they would be spending more than that. Is that what you're saying? So um, it would be covered if they were spending more as well. Yeah. Okay. Okay. We'll just leave it for now. We'll talk later. Thank you. Yeah. I think it, it, it's certainly um, always a good time to review the incentives that are currently in place. Um, I just don't want to get too far into that in this specific conversation since no. we don't have the bylaw in front of us. Well, I agree that we should have this incentive, but I think it's great. And I think it should be for this coming up, not go back. Let's not go back. Let's go forward. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Paulson, did I see your hand up again? I know it's just semantics, but um, um, I wonder if it makes any sense. It's, it's listed here in the agenda as industrial revitalized and tax exemption. And I wonder if we change industrial to business so that we do have the option to, um, and I may, may be looking at this the wrong way, but we have the option to not be discriminatory that it's only major and light industry. Just a thought. It's just a matter of semantics. It's just a title. So, okay, so I don't do want to get too. I don't want to get too tangled up in in discussion about the title. So I I do just want to say again that we do have um, an incentive revitalization tax incentive um, for business currently. Um, so we do have that in our commercial revitalization incentive. 
Um, so what we are trying to create is the class that we don't have one for. But again, I think we can go back and review that commercial one at, at any point. Okay. So seeing no um, more questions from council at this point, um, I think we'll move on to the next report from Andrew. Thank you for that. Uh, so yes, once again, we're uh, focused in on the uh, industrial taxpayers, uh, and 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 you know there as as we've mentioned, there's been uh, quite a bit of discussion, and 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 I really uh, uh, I really appreciate the 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 time and effort that all the industrial taxpayers have uh, provided to staff as far as uh, support and just understanding uh, their positions. So, uh, you know, it, it, it has been a, an interesting uh, experience for me. Uh, everyone's been uh, extremely help helpful as far as information and, uh, and sharing other positions. And, uh, and uh, it, it really has been uh, great for me to understand uh, uh, how this industrial taxation works, uh, especially with BC assessment and, and the legislative uh, uh, properties of, of, of class four versus class five. And, and uh, so, so I, I really appreciate the, the effort has been provided by all, all, all those stakeholders involved. So with this next report, um, obviously the uh, tax burdens, uh, and it was alluded to earlier in the staff report uh, associated with the 22.64% uh, of the overall tax burden that's uh, shared by the uh, industrial taxpayers of, of the city of Port Alberni. Uh, so council, uh, you know, would like to see uh, some clarity on, on, on this uh, topic. Also, uh, we did uh, we did do some uh, historical looking uh, back at, at, at how industrial taxpayers uh, have been impacted through the tax burden over the years. And, and, and you can see through some of the tables and some of the graphs that we have in the staff report uh, that show the, 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 the shift from, from the industrial taxpayers over to the residential taxpayers as far as the overall tax burden within the city of Port Alberni. So starting back in 2006, I, I believe it was the uh, catalyst group that, that was uh, uh, bringing forward the, uh, the request to lower these industrial taxes. And, we, and at that time we did see the, the uh, share between residential and major industry uh, split uh, evenly at just over 40%. Uh, and and in, be in between the years 2008 to 2012, uh, the city reduced the overall industrial taxation by $2.1 million. Later, as part of the uh, Lagoon purchase and, and, and commitments made uh, at that time, uh, there was a tax freeze uh, from 2013 to 2017 uh, on industrial taxes. And the beginning, uh, and you can see that within the graphs that are uh, attached to the staff report. And then since 2017, the overall industrial tax base has been sitting at that 22.64%. The uh, Alberni Waterfront Employers Association approached the city and, and sought some uh, tax certainty as far as industrial taxation. And there was that fear that uh, with the increased assessed values, the actual uh, tax burden would continue to grow with those increased values, understanding that uh, there, you know, there needs to be certainty within uh, investment for these industrial uh, properties. So with that, uh, the request was made that, uh, that the tax on, on, on class four remained at the 22.09% uh, for class four. Any increases in the overall uh, property taxation uh, would continue to be within that classification in class four. And then the actual increases would be equal on the overall tax burden uh, based on what is normally uh, uh, increased year over year. So the increases would just increase as they would uh, for residential or, or commercial uh, for that class, even though that the assessed values within that class would increase and that would dilute the overall impact of taxation. And the city uh, enters into a five-year accord uh, that reflects those commitments. So that was a request from the Waterfront uh, Employers Association. Uh, that was back in early 2020. Now with light industry, uh, that section of the, uh, of the tax burden uh, sat at 0.55%. Uh, 
overall a very small percentage of the uh, overall tax burden that was shared, but the classification was fairly small. As we discussed in the prior uh, staff report, uh, the question was posed, why, why did the sand property uh, move to uh, class five? And that was obviously because of the classification and that was purely based on, on the legislative uh, uh, properties of, of that, that actual use. And that was a remanufacturing facility. The total property class uh, assessed value, obviously with that new investment from Sand Group uh, saw a significant increase year over year and uh and and usually with those tax rates that are associated with both major and light industry they are usually uh, linked very closely together uh, with that recent investment we saw class five increase 180 percent year over year uh, this is a significant increase and we saw that in the uh, first staff report that noted the non-market change for class five uh, at a very high level so in the current financial plan, we see a, a blocking of class four and five. Uh, this was, uh, was something that uh, was, uh, was done with the understanding that these rates normally are linked closely together. Uh, and that has been the same way since uh, 2015. And you also see within the, uh, within, the, within the staff report, there is a graph showing that uh, for all those years from 2015 to 2020, uh, they were uh, very close together as far as uh, tax rates overall. I think uh, it's up on two pages on page 62. So with this graph in, in here, we can see that in 2015, 16, 17, and to 19, uh, the rates were virtually the same. And then with that investment from Sand Group and the shifting from a property that was normally in class four to class five, we saw the overall uh, values in class five increase. And then the burden did not shift from 0.55. So that's why we see the drop in 2020, obviously bringing it back into the same range that we historically uh, see. And in the current draft financial plan, as far as tax rate burdens, 2021 sees the rate locked in at the same rate in draft. So obviously with Santa Group and, and the realization that they are no longer in class four, that shifted uh, 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 their, their uh, position obviously and, and, and they did bring some good information to council to consider uh, last, last month. So with Sam obviously uh, shifting the group, they, they, they see across the province a, a lower rate usually for light industry and and uh, and obviously with light industry, there is not the uh, accelerated depreciation that is seen in class four. So that was a, a couple of the uh, concerns that were brought forward at uh, at uh, the meeting when they were a delegation uh, back in February. So that was on February 16th and, and their request was that classes four and five are not blocked for the purpose of setting tax rates and that the city uh, provide a, uh, an RTE uh, incentive bylaw that would limit the uh, uh, taxation assigned uh, for that new investment uh, in the, in, in the uh, first uh, five to 10 years. In fact, uh, they felt that the uh, original uh, industrial taxation uh, revitalization uh, exemption was a little bit too, uh, too beneficial to the, those new investments. And then they proposed a, 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 a RTE that saw a, a decreasing uh, exposure uh, or increasing exposure, I should say, of that new investment as, as, as the uh, years move forward. So originally in the uh, industrial uh, RTE that we had previously, the, the rate of uh, exposure was, was uh, blocked out for the first five years. And, and during that, that uh, presentation, San uh, acknowledges that, the, uh, that this was not a realization that they were in class five until fairly recently. And, and a lot of the work that was done by the uh, Waterfront Association group uh, also assumed that the property would remain in class four. And, and, and the uh, important uh, note there as far as the uh, depreciation and, and, and the shift is that 
class four sees a legislative accelerated depreciation for their investments. Uh, and, and within the staff report, there is a, 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 an example of, of, of how that impact is on the properties when you compare it to uh, class four versus class five. So uh, let's say in class five, that, that new value is depreciated at 1% per year. Uh, that, that exposes that excess, that assessed value at a higher rate uh, than it would be if it wasn't uh, in class four. So with that, you see a class four depreciation that's legislated for a sawmill at 4%. So you, their actual uh, value of assessment goes down at a much quicker rate. And then that would lower the actual tax burden that they'd share within that class if all else remained equal. Of course, the example here is a hypothetical example and it's not to be uh, rel relied upon, but it's just an example to show council that uh, this is the type of impact that would be had uh, versus class four and, and class five. So, Today, uh, we are seeking, as staff, are seeking the uh, council's recommendation uh, to, uh, or the committee's recommendation to council uh, to set the tax rates. And in 2021, uh, the recommendation that is brought forward is to keep it at 22.64% and block those properties uh, in 2021 in both class four and class five. Understanding that the depreciation in class uh, five this year would not be impacted uh, as the depreciation would be set in next year on any new investment. And uh, for 2022, uh, council can review the possible implications on the classes and then review the implications as alluded to in option number two. So, the alternatives that are in the staff report are to block as, as plan, as we have in our financial plan for class four and five. But when we look at, at the option number two, and this could be considered and brought forward in 2022 as far as an option, is that we continue to block at 22.64% within the classification, but understand that any new investment in class five uh, would be considered uh, uh, slightly different. And in the staff report, uh, I mentioned that uh, it's said to amend the values and, and, and I cannot technically amend the values for the property values, but what could be done is you can uh, look at the actual values and, and mimic the impact, whether that property would have been in class four, then class five and use a accelerated depreciation on that new investment that has been made in class five to reflect what could have been the value if it was in class four and then shift the burden. And then once you get those new property values uh, with that annual calculation based on the depreciation should it have been in class four, then you set your rates based on that, that amended uh, assessment. And then you would uh, have to do that calculation annually to, to continue on that same path to reflect the alternative in option number two. The, the third uh, alternative that was brought forward to council to consider uh, uh, was the blocking of the major industry and light industry, but taking out the light industry and setting that at a specific rate of either uh, 30 or 40 uh, as a tax rate rather than the, the approximately 53 that is currently. And then, and then just assign the class four uh, uh, balance uh, based on what is remaining after you set class five. Of course, council could choose to do any other option uh, that they see, uh, but at this time, the recommendation is to uh, continue on to the path that uh, has been set uh, based on the work that we've done over the last year. So, you know, with this, obviously, we uh, tried to find uh, uh, a path uh, that uh, that was. Uh, still reflecting the original intent of the Alberni Waterfront Employers Group, um, understanding that uh, year to year, council has the ability to set the tax burdens as they see appropriate. And year to year, we would have the actual assessed values to make those assessments on where the uh, actual values should lie. So uh, at this time, you know, we've had requests from the Waterfront Association, we've had requests from SAN uh, and, and uh, 
the recommendation today is in front of council or in front of the committee to recommend to council as far as setting the tax burdens uh, when we uh, set that bylaw in April. Thank you very much for that, Andrew. So um, to be clear, the recommendation is that we proceed on the path of what we've been kind of working toward for the last year in, in the conversations that we've had. And that is to block four and five um, and keep them at the same percentage of the budget that they that they currently are at. Um, Council, if it's okay with you, we are going to have an opportunity um, for our some of our industrial taxpayers who um, may be on the meeting today to speak a little bit later, but I have just heard that um, one of the representatives from Paper Excellence um, is only able to stay a few more minutes. So if it's okay with Catalyst, I'd like to welcome him to speak now so that he has an opportunity. It's okay with council, seeing no objections to that. Um, Patrick, if you are on, I will pass it over to you for any input. Thank you, uh, Mayor Minions. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, first of all, I want to, uh, I guess, uh, acknowledge the work that the uh, the city has done so far and the attention that we have received from uh, the city about our, our, our competitive position of the uh, Port Alberni mill. And uh, again, I want to thank you uh, about that. So for us, it's, it's, very, it's very key that, uh, you know, that... Uh, uh, we, we, we keep talking about our taxation level because, you know, like we, <clears throat> we're going to a major transformation and we, like this year we will be investing money in the mill to <clears throat> produce a new uh, paper product and because we had to get away from our traditional printing and writing uh, markets. So whatever <clears throat> the uh, city of Port Alberni uh, can do to help and support, keep, uh, support the investment and keeping the mill competitive for many years to come, is uh, will be very welcome and uh, and and uh, I guess appreciated from you again. Uh, thank you very much for your your time and what you are. Uh, I think it's an investment that you're doing there, and uh, it's gonna be worth uh, quite a bit uh, for us uh, when comes uh, the time to make the next round of decision of where the capital will be allocated within the company. So uh, again, thank you very much and. Uh, uh, for, for, for the work that you have done so far. And uh, let's please stay uh, in close uh, communication together. And, uh, but uh, thank you again. Thanks so much, Patrick. Um, and just on behalf of council, um, we want to thank you for the investment that Catalyst, that Paper Excellence is making in, in the local site. And the food grade paper, um, I think, is really exciting to all of us as, as an industry that's really growing. So we're very happy to have Paper Excellence to work with as a partner in the community. So council, um, at this point, I will turn it over to council for questions um, before we go to um, other input from the public. Are there questions from council? Councillor Haggard. Thank you, Madam Chair. Not so much a question, but just a couple of comments. Um, the Sand Group did point, make a point that they did a survey of other communities and that we would be that they would be the highest tax rate in their light industry. But I'm sure if there was a survey done with major industry it would also be one of the highest in the province as well. Even though we've worked very hard to lower that, it's still comparatively high to other communities. So I think that's probably a mute point. And I'd really hate to help one that would hurt the other. So I think both industries have to be treated equally as fair both light and major making major investments in our community. And I think we need, need to really respect that, but respect both of them equally. So, and as you said, we've worked really hard this year to be fair and to hold the line of taxation as much as possible. So my suggestion is I do agree with the recommendation, let's steer the course and what we've been working on. And we can view it annually every year. Thank you, Councillor Haggard. Other comments from council? Councillor Paulson and then Councillor Corbeil. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, to you, to Andrew. Um, I, I'm still a little unclear and I'll try and get my thoughts here together on um, what the ramifications are to the sand mill if we uh, block the two 
categories. Uh, would they be, I'm trying to get the messages from their representative and plus what we're working on here to try and get a clear picture of the middle road here. And it's, it's actually, for me anyway, it's a pretty complicated <laughs> uh, subject, but um, the difference that San will be paying um, from 2020 to 2021, if we block them, um, will it be dollar value wise? No, not percentage wise, dollar value wise, a, a, um, an unbalanced dollar uh, portion to this. Um, I, I just wondering if blocking them makes it punitive to them for their investment. And if, if their dollar value uh, that they would actually wind up paying would be um, disproportionate to um, what they would be if they we we kind of modified or or um, or had a modified version of the um, class five rate. I'm just I'm a little unclear, and it's you know I, we've heard two sides of the story, and somewhere in the middle uh, we've got to meet. But um, I just need some clarification on what that ramification is on the dollar value, not the percent value. Thanks, go ahead, Andrew. Thanks, uh, Chair Minions. I, I think with, with this one and, and, and Councillor Polson, I, I mean, it is a complicated uh, uh, <laughs> uh, item to try, try to, to decipher and understand. So, uh, you know, I, I, I was challenged too, but like I said, I had a lot of support from, from all the stakeholders and, and understanding and, and includes, including SANS uh, uh, representatives. So. Uh, with that, we we actually looked at that uh, dollar value, and 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 this is based on on remaining at the prior rate in the in the previous year, versus blocking this year and moving it from the the uh, twenty to fifty three. So that's approximately two hundred sixty eight thousand dollars in in twenty twenty one. If we if we versus leaving it at the at the rate from prior year and moving it to the new blocking rate. Thank you. And um, for, as a follow up to that, um, and I'll just start by saying that I think we have to be cautious of comparing 2020 and 2021 um, because of how we saw that dip in tax rate. Um, and I think that was unintended, um, that we didn't intend for that class to, you know, cut in half in their tax rate. So I'm not sure we want to use that as a, as a baseline. But as a follow up to that, um, Andrew, I can I assume that the way that we're doing it, um, both Catalyst and Sand Group would be taxed at the same tax rate? That is correct, Chair Okay, So it's it's not that we're going to be, you know, taxing one at a rate higher than the other. Um, they would be taxed equally for the current value of each of their facilities. Yes, and just to clarify and add on, as we talked about in alternative number two, um, as we move forward, that investment that Sand makes wouldn't be depreciated at that accelerated value as it would as catalyst in class four. So or paper excellence, sorry. Uh, so just to be clear that, you know, as we move forward, you have to keep an eye on that if we're talking about fairness and equity. Yes, absolutely. And I think that's a great point. And I think my um, big thought here is that um, these are big decisions that we are making um, with large financial impacts to multiple um, large taxpayers, regardless of which decision we, which way we decide to go. And that is precisely why we started having these conversations a year ago um, or more than a year ago. So I feel really strongly that to make a significant change um, at, you know, based on a, a specific request very much at the last minute of the process when we've been having these conversations for a year um, would be somewhat irresponsible on our on our part. And I, I feel like that's where you get those unintended consequences when you have a thoughtful conversation for a year and then all of a sudden at the last minute you completely change course. So um, I'm very strongly supportive of um, the recommendation that's in front of us. And as a follow up to that, I'm really looking forward to having a thoughtful conversation with the SAN group and with other industrial taxpayers over the course of the next few months about a revitalization tax incentive. I think we all want to work with them on that and, and have investment into our community um, come with a benefit. Um, so yeah, I think, I think that's how we move forward and, and work with all taxpayers fairly. Councillor Corbeil and then Councillor Solda and then Paulson. 
Thank you, Madam Chair. Well, you said most of what I was going to say. Uh, I agree with uh, that option too, where uh, the um, the the uh, depreciation mimics a class four, and as well with the uh, exemption uh, uh, bylaw, uh, I think that's uh, as good as we can do. As you just pointed out, we can't just compare. Uh, light industry to heavy industry last year because historically they've been uh, pretty much lockstep, not just in Port Alberni, but uh, from what I've seen right around the province. So um, yeah, I, I, as I say, I go with option two where we can mimic the depreciation rates of uh, class four for the uh, light industry or for the sand group and, uh, and look at uh, the uh, revitalization exemption. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Corbio. Councillor Solda. And I was just going to concur with yourself, Madam Mayor, and the last speaker. Thank you. Thanks very much, Councillor Solda. Councillor Paulson. Yeah, I guess we're, we're summarizing here now. And um, um, option one, I think, is the one that, uh, Madam Chair, that you were kind of leaning towards. I'm kind of with Councillor Corbio. Because of the lateness of the presentation, possibly option one is the one for this year but we need to look at option two and option two is exact essentially the same thing but we give them some depreciation uh, consideration in that and and i actually like option two but it may be just a little late in the game for 2021 so um that's just my thoughts and thanks for listening thanks councillor paulson and i completely agree with you um i think option two is where we need to look to go um, a combination of a revitalization tax exemption, possibly accommodating for um, the depreciation in some way. My, my thought is that that's a 2020 or the next year, 2022 um, discussion, because again, those are big changes to what we have been working on for the past year. Um, those are big changes to the numbers that we've seen um, put forward in all of our budget meetings. So um, I think we just need to be cautious and intentional and make sure we are as informed and aware as possible before we make significant changes. And I don't believe that we can get as informed as we need to in the next couple of weeks. Um, so I think my recommendation and my feeling is that we move forward with option one this year and we start as soon as possible having the conversations for the next tax year. I'm not seeing any other questions from council at this point. Andrew, go ahead. Yeah, I just wanted to add on 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 the end of your your last comment there about uh, as soon as possible and understanding that we don't receive the values from BC assessment until the first week of January. So, understanding what impact and what's within uh, the assessed role uh, is pure. We'd be making assumptions. Uh, so, I mean, we can work towards those assumptions, and then once we get those amounts, sure, we could put those in, but. I guess that's my caution to council in that regard is just to, the information won't be exact until uh, January. Absolutely. And I think that um, I'm more referring to the creation of a revitalization incentive. Um, I think that's a process that um, in order to get it right, because it is a significant, um, could be a significant program with significant benefit to the community and um, specific taxpayers, I think we need to be very thoughtful and intentional in that process, make sure we're as informed as possible. Um, and as we've seen with this conversation um, and the time it's take, the number of times we've, we've met to have the conversation and, and get informed, it does take time. So I want to make sure we start um, the revitalization incentive conversations as soon as possible. Thank you. Councillor Haggard. Would you like me to make the motion, Madam Chair? Sure. <laughs> I'd like to move that members of the committee recommend to council that council direct blocking the tax burden percentage for major industry and light industry at 22.64% and assign the same tax rate to each class for the year 2021. Second. Thank you. Seconded by Councillor Poon. Are there questions on this? Councillor Corbeil and then Councillor Paulson. Uh, to Andrew, just so I'm clear, so we we couldn't uh, choose option two even if we wanted to, Andrew, because of uh, as you just pointed out, we won't know the uh, values until till June. So, um, Madam Chair, uh, with that question, 
what we see currently in the class five is all new uh, assessed value. So the depreciation hasn't been uh, applied on that new, uh, new property that has been new market change in light industry. So in effect, there wouldn't be any difference between being in class four and class five in 2021. It's not until 2022 where we see the depreciation on that investment in class five in that first year where it would have been 4%, let's say in, in class four, but it would only be 1%, let's say in class five. So my point is why wouldn't we go with option two now? Otherwise, we're, if we want to, we'll just have to revisit it again next year. So go ahead, Madam Chair. You go ahead, Andrew. Okay. Uh, so I think tax rates are, are reflective of, of council's uh, direction each year. Uh, so that being said, option one, there is no difference between option one and two. That's correct in 2021. But next year, when we bring forward the options to council, that is an option that we can consider. And I, and I think I wanted to pro provide that that, uh, that information to council uh, and, and reflect the, 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 the information that San had brought forward as far as the impact on class five versus class four. So that is something that we can talk about as we move forward as an option to consider uh, along with the RTE. Thank you. I think that clarifies really well. Um, and I, I I think council, you know, these are difficult decisions because um, we appreciate the investment that it has been made um, in our community um, by the SAN group. We appreciate um, the fact that that investment is being made in, in part um, due to Catalyst Paper Excellence making that land available. Um, and we also want to respect um, the fact that we want the residents of this community and other businesses to see benefit as well. So. Um, you know, I'll just I'll just repeat again, I guess, my comments from earlier that these are big decisions with big financial implications. And I think that they um, require us to be as informed um, and thoughtful in the process as possible. So um, I'm looking forward to continuing the conversation for next year and really having a building a, a good revitalization tax exemption that seats, suits the needs of the community short term and long term. Councillor Paulson, I think you had your hand up as well. Yeah, and um, just before we vote, I'm just wondering if we could entertain a follow-up recommendation to council uh, that we work, um, basically we work on option two plus the um, uh, industrial revitalization tax exemption uh, leading up to 2022. I don't know if we want to make that recommendation today. I would like to, but um, I think that's where we, I think that's kind of where we want to end up. Um, uh, budget time next year. I'll come back to you um, to make that okay. recommendation as soon as we vote on this one, because I think that, um, you know, just giving that indication that we are intending to start those conversations and, and you know, start with a report from another report from Andrew um, on this matter following budget this year um, makes a lot of sense. And I think it shows good faith um, yeah. to the businesses in that class five area too, that we're taking the conversation very seriously and um, we hope to find some middle road. Thank you. Um, and council, just as a matter of process, I will let you know, um, cause I know we have had one um, speaker already um, just due to timelines. We do of course have public input, which is where I'm envisioning um, any other members of the public or um, industrial taxpayers speaking. Um, I, if, uh, for a moment, I thought maybe we should let them speak first before we vote on this, but um, recognizing that this is just a recommendation to council, we still have the opportunity to hear from SAN Group if they're on, um, and this certainly could change if council chose to before we um, bring it to our council meeting and, and vote on it again there. So I do think we're fine to vote on this and then go based on the agenda here from SAN Group still during this meeting if they're, if they're on. So with that, seeing no other comments, I will call the question on the motion to move forward with option one as recommended by staff, all in favor. Carried, none opposed, thank you. Um, and we will move on to uh, the fourth report, which is a summary of questions and answers. Um, that is there for information. Andrew, was there anything that you wanted to highlight or just in, if council has any questions? 
Yeah, I think it's just an opportunity for council to uh, make any other queries that they have regarding the uh, completion. Obviously, there is uh, uh, question 75 that we still need to provide uh, a follow up for the public's uh, uh, request for information. Obviously, uh, we couldn't get that one for this uh, agenda, but we'll work towards getting that done as soon as possible. Thank you, Councillor Paulson. Now would now be the time to make that recommendation uh, oh. for council. Yes, sorry, about thank this. you, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> I'll rely on Twyla for wordsmithing, okay. but I think that, um, that we want to essentially have a look at option two, moving forward into the 2022 taxation year um, in uh, parallel or in conjunction uh, with the uh, work on the industrial revitalization tax exemption policy. Okay, so I'm hearing as a motion something like <laughs> but we, we want staff to bring back a report with um, more information on revitalization tax exemption and um, consideration for council to pursue option two for the next tax year. Does that sound yeah, right? They, and yeah, exactly. And the, the, the option or the portion of option two that has me um, um, taking notice is with regards to the depreciation rates. Thank yeah. You. So okay. I don't know if we need that in the wording or not. But. I second that motion, whatever Thank it is. You. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Thank you, Councillor Corbeil. Great motion, Councillor Paulson. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm sure it was. <laughs> okay, Council, any conversation on this? I think we've, we've talked it out. Um, all in favor? Carried. Thank you very much. Um, okay, now um, on to if there's any follow up questions from Council on the um, report provided with the questions and answers, or if um, there are any new questions to add. Okay, um, I do have one new question to add. Um, Andrew, This I don't need an answer on this today, but um, I had remembered, this is around the pool. Um, I had thought I remembered um, at one point when we got community forest funds, council, last council, specifically allocating some of those funds to the pool. Um, additional to that, someone reminded me that um, we had also allocated some from a policing reserve, uh, or sorry, not the policing reserve, but from a refund from the um, policing contract. So I'm feeling like there's been two um, somewhat significant, you know, uh, maybe a couple hundred thousand dollars each contributions made to the Parks and Rec Reserve Fund um, that were made to the Parks and Rec Reserve Fund, but were specifically supposed to be designated to pool. Um, and I think that because of just the generalness around that reserve fund, um, they maybe weren't specifically allocated that way. Um, so I'm wondering if you're able to bring back information on that um, uh, so that council can, could consider if we want to consider taking some of the funds out that have been specifically allocated to the pool and put them into the new pool reserve. Um, and I'm not sure there could be other instances. Um, those are the two that um, that I personally remember. Uh, absolutely. Uh, question. Uh, I, I have started to look back and in, in looking at the prior years. And, and uh, yes, there's an indication that you are correct on the RCMP surpluses. Uh, we can provide that. Um, I'm not aware of the uh, Alberni Valley Community Forest amounts, but I'll, I'll continue further with that. It's uh, just an example, I guess, of, of the opportunity to, to actually take those funds and have that in a separate reserve if that was the intent. And that shows that that's maybe best practice in, in as far as uh, a specific reserve for the Aquatic Centre, if that's the desire of Council. Perfect. Thank you very much. Councillor Paulson. I think that's a really good point. And I, I don't recall, I'm sure Andrew will find uh, he'll be the sleuth that will come to the bottom of this dilemma. But um, we just have to keep in mind, uh, reminding ourselves that that Parks and Rec Reserve Fund is where that fund is supposed to come from is a percentage of each and every admission, uh, plus any um, uh, sale of uh, timber from um, uh, parks or, or new subdivision clearing. So if those funds got put into that reserve fund, they shouldn't be there. You know, they just, so uh, good for you for picking that up. I I, I hope that our reserve fund is what it is, but maybe it isn't. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, and, and I think, um, you know, someone suggested to me not long ago that we should take that whole Parks and Rec Reserve Fund um, and allocate it to the pool. And um, I don't think we should do that. Um, we need to be looking at, um, you know, many needs across our community. The pool is absolutely one of them. So I, I, I'm thankful that Council is moving forward toward having a, a specific reserve fund to save for the pool. Um, but we do have to remember that there are other needs in this community. Um, for you know, maintaining the infrastructure we currently have um, and looking at new projects as well. So I think we need to be um, thoughtful about this reserve money and just make sure that you know, what has been committed in the past is, is still there today. Um, yeah, so if, if we could get information on that at some point, that would be great. Are there any other questions from council? Okay, seeing none, then we will move on to correspondence. Um, and I believe we have just one item, which was an email dated March 10th, 2021 from Inder Johal, CFO of Sand Group Incorporated regarding industrial taxation rates. Um, that, Twyla, was there any other correspondence? No, Chair Minions, that was all. Okay, thank you. Um, then, and let, is there any comments on that correspondence? Uh, we have um, Dennis Hickson with his hand raised. Okay, perfect. Um, so we can go to Dennis now if you'd like to speak to the letter. Dennis, if you wish to unmute yourself and go ahead. Dennis, we still can't hear you. Um, so if you're speaking, you might be muted. He is, um, oh, he just muted himself again. He is, Dennis, you were unmuted. There, okay, you're showing yourself as unmuted. Go ahead, Dennis. I think we're having some technical difficulties. Um, maybe we will just move on to public input question period. If there um, is anyone else on the line who has questions or comments, members of the public um, or representatives from any other groups, um, we could hear from them now and then come back to Dennis. I'm not seeing any hands raising. Well, then we'll just give a minute or two um, to hopefully, hopefully we're able to hear from Dennis. Twyla, do we have anything from, from him? No, I'm not receiving anything. He is showing that his mic is on, but we're not hearing anything. Okay. I could um, try to reach him by telephone. Yeah, maybe, um, I, I know we are you know, at the end of the meeting, but maybe we should just recess for five minutes. Um, and I wanna make sure we give an opportunity to Sand Group to speak. Um, so if we could just recess for five minutes, um, you could reach out by phone and um, then we could try to accommodate that way. Absolutely. Okay.
Can you hear me now? Perfect. Okay, great. Thanks. I'll, I'll uh, wait for council to, uh, or the committee to hear me. Great. Thank you. Bye. Dennis, we are able to um, hear you now. We're just going to wait a couple more minutes for all of council to return, and then we'll call on you to speak. Thanks very much, Chairman Minions. We've got one more minute for Councillor Poon to arrive back. Great. <laughs> Okay, I think we will, um, it is 5.27, um, so it's been five minutes since we declared our recess. We will get started. Um, Dennis, we are glad that we're, a we're able to um, have you on. We were um, hoping to not miss out on Sans input. So I will pass it over to you if you'd like to introduce yourself and then um, we'll hear your comments. Great, thanks Madam Chair. Um, my name is Dennis Hickson and I'm um, speaking on behalf of the Sand Group with, with respect to items, I think number two, or actually it'll only be number three, I think right now with respect to the, uh, the uh, industrial tax burden options for 2021. Um, it appears um, that the uh, committee of the whole will be recommending to council to um, adopt uh, option one, which is to maintain the um, existing plan to um, block all the industrial taxpayers um, to at 5.368% um, um, tax rate this year. Um, Sand Group is very concerned about this, um, this, rec this um, recommendation to council. Um, we are of the view that the, essentially, we, first of all, we have to establish that um, there's an intent to decrease the major industry tax rate um, from 5.604% down to 5.368%. So there's going to be a reduction to class four. Um, there has been an increase in the assessed value um, for light industry being class five. That, is, the, that increase in assessed value is um, substantially attributable to the Sand Group's investment. Um, in the property in, uh, the property in, in, uh, in Port Alberni. Um, we view that the increase in taxation essentially for um, Sand Group's investment, um, the, 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 the increase in taxation rate um, from the 2.1% to the 5.368% that's going to that is going to be recommended to apply to the same group is effectively funding 
the decrease in the major industry tax rate from 5.604 to 5.368%. That seems perverse um, to the SANG group in that the SANG group is the one um, that is investing in the community. Um, and they and the SANG group doesn't believe that the, um, the, the increase in assessed value uh, should be going towards funding a major industry tax um, decrease. Um, um, so someone in, on the committee was, and I think actually it was you, Madam Chair, <laughs> were saying that we should be very cautious to use 2020 as a baseline. I, um, and in 2020, the tax rate for light industry was to about 2.1%. Um, and the recommendation is to more than double it to 5.368%. Um, the, I think it, perhaps it was lost on council that, that um, um, in, in or sorry, on the committee, that uh, in the committee it sort of taking the position that we, was, we, sh we would be doing fairness to the SAN group by mimicking um, the assessed value of as if it were a, light, a major industry player. Um, it, I think it was lost on council that that wasn't the only issue that we were bringing to councils to sort of the committee's attention. Um, it is a fact that light industry tax rates throughout municipalities in the province um, are substantially lower than major industry tax rates. If um, Port Alberni is, a, is an outlier um, in, um, in maintaining a tax rate for light industry and major industry being the same. Uh, I did a little more um, number crunching today. And if you take all of, I believe there's 170 odd municipalities in the province. And if you take the municipalities uh, that are uh, that do have uh, both light or that do have light industry tax base, the average tax rate is 1.89%. If council adopts um, the tax rate uh, for light industry of 5.3, 5.36%, um, the they will be um, the sixth highest. It will result in a, in the sixth highest. Light industry taxation rate um, in the pro in, in municipalities in the province. Only Tassis, Houston, Grand Isle, Gold River, and Cash Creek would be higher. Um, we uh, we will I guess I guess we will be probably we'll, the um, the next step for for San. Uh, given that we believe this is a a a, a, a um, um, a creation of an unfair tax regime. Um, we uh, will be, I guess we could, or I guess the question is, will we be able to make uh, presentations or representations to council before they make their final decision? So that's a question, that's a question embedded Thank in you. my... Yeah. Sure. I, I think, Dennis, um, that you can absolutely continue to make um, representations to council prior to our fi final decisions being made, as any taxpayer or resident of our community um, has a right to do. Great. Thank you very much. So um, we'll probably be making uh, more presentations to council um, because we do, uh, the Gersan group does feel aggrieved by um, the what we believe we what we view as perverse results um, that will result from uh, elevating the tax rate for light industry um, by more than double to 5.368 percent um I, I know it i know we were late to the party and um but i don't think we should be using lateness as an excuse for maintaining something that is is not fair um, and I, th I think if council feels, uh, or if the committee feels uncertain about certain aspects, um, I can uh, certainly help and, and, and uh, BC assessment can certainly help. And there are all sorts of resources to ensure that, that the committee of the whole makes a uh, correct, de uh, correct decision uh, in its recommendations to council. 
So um, again, I'm going to reiterate that um, uh, we that San. I'm going to re reiterate that the taxation rate um, for um, throughout the province for light industry um, is 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 going to be very high. If you if if council elects if uh, council elects to increase it to 5.368 percent, and I and I also want to emphasize that it really does appear to be a perverse situation where uh, the San Group will be uh, essentially funding uh, the a tax rate decrease uh, for the major industry players in Port Alberni. And that's it. Thanks very much. Thank you, Dennis. Um, I appreciate you know your your coming to speak to council again, and and look forward to hearing more from you. Um, I do just want to start by saying, for members of council may have questions or comments, also that I sympathize with the Sand Group for where you're at right now, um, and it is not our intent to penalize the Sand Group in any way. Um, I, I just I do think it's important to note that. Sand Group is not late to the party, as noted. Um, Sand Group was the first industrial taxpayer to approach us, and um, that happened over a year ago. Um, so I understand um, the situation has changed, and what the original request was is no longer the, the request of the Sand Group. Um, I am a person who likes to make well-informed decisions based on, um, you know, based on data and information um, that I can see in front of me and have time to analyze. And um, I certainly personally will be cautious to make any last minute changes that could have significant impacts. That said, um, I welcome you to bring forward more information and um, I can certainly commit that council will review it. Um, and at the very least, um, we are absolutely looking forward to having conversations with the Sand Group going forward about a revitalization industrial tax um, incentive and the needs of the sand group as well as the needs of the community. Council, are there questions or comments? Okay, seeing none. Um, Twyla, do we have other questions from uh, members of the public? Yes, Madam Mayor. Uh, we have a submission from Mr. Randy Fraser. He has a couple of questions contained within the one email. The first, the DCC reserve fund in the five-year plan, it, it is just one page and has just one total. I know there are five categories that DCCs are collected for. So can you explain what is the page in the budget? Is it the total of all the funds? Second question, what was the 15,000 going in 2020? What is the $30,000 a year going into it over the next five years? What was the $100,000 for in the acquisition and expenses? Lastly, please provide me with the 2019 and 2020 DCC funds for all five categories and not just the totals, but hopefully the contributions to each category for the years and any expenses that may have come from them. With a note as to where the expense went to, if there are any. I know the funds can only be used for the category it is collected for. Thank you. Thank you, Twyla. Um, Andrew, I would imagine you don't have that information today and I wouldn't ask you to provide it. Um, I think that the that essentially asking for more details on the DCC development cost charge um, fund, I'm sure that can be provided. Um, do you have anything you'd like to add today, Andrew? And you're muted. Thank you. Sorry. Uh, no, Madam Chair, I think uh, it's best to provide that information uh, in, in, in the follow-up Q&A. Uh, that, that way it's uh, uh, provided in, in, in accurate detail rather than verbally uh, speaking off a of page here. So. Great. Thank you very much. Twyla, any other questions from members of the public? No, Chair Minions. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much. Then would somebody like to move adjournment? So moved by Councillor Solda, seconded by Councillor Poon. All in favor? Carried. Thanks very much, um, everyone, for signing on to our meeting today. <laughs>